All right, guys, it's showtime, and today is Q&A on sound advice. I have me, of course, Toys DIY Audio, with Justin, the DIY Audio Guy. How are you doing today, Justin? I'm doing good. How's everybody doing out there in, in YouTube land? YouTube land. <laughs> YouTube land. The land what's of up, YouTube. YouTube. You know, they all say, what's up, YouTube, at the beginning of our videos. I try not to say that. It's like the legend of Zelda, right? Like the... Now we're the YouTube land instead of like Hyrule or whatever. And right. anyway, so today's going to be Q&A. Hey, and Robbie Hansen, it should be starting and you shouldn't be here anyway. And the reason why you shouldn't be here is it's his anniversary. He should be spending time with his wife, don't you think? I, I would think so. Yeah. You don't want to pull a Rob and have a live stream on your wife's birthday like, <laughs> like he did last week. Um, I know. Schedule that a little bit better. Uh, so, Robbie, what happens, and I've noticed this on other live streams and on, on ours as well, um, when the live stream notification pops up and all the, the stuff before is going, um, it's just like a dead screen, really, and the chat is active, sometimes you got to, like, leave the app and come back in in order to actually get it to work. It's like a YouTube glitch. So I've seen that happen before. And the other thing is, too, we are typically a little bit ahead of the comments as well. So that happens as well. Um, but, yeah, it, maybe Robbie and his wife are watching us because we are just that good. And that's probably what's actually happening. We're anniversary level entertainment, I guess. That's right. Absolutely. <laughs> so <laughs> that's what I do. All right. So to, today we actually have even questions for ourselves as well. So, Justin, I'm going to go ahead and ask you a question first uh, before we get too started we didn't talk um, about these ahead of time so i have no idea what the hell he's gonna ask i might have i might, <laughs> I might not know the answer <laughs> no i don't even know what i'm gonna ask so no. so far out of all the projects you've done what do you think is your favorite one and why is it your favorite one well oh gosh i meant to pull up pictures so i could show it off um i think that one of my favorites was the the actual amplifier rack that i put under the seat in my truck mm. and uh and one reason why is because up until I did that, every time I put wires in my truck, it looked like utter garbage, you know, spaghetti, rat's nest, just everywhere. I never could figure out how all these pro installers, how these guys who put vehicles in magazines back in the 90s could get their wires to look good. And then I started watching YouTube videos and Dean and Fernando down at Five Star Stereo in Florida popped up mm. and they're like, oh, here's how you do it. You put 10,000 zip ties on it and you spend four <laughs> hours lining everything up perfectly. And I... Uh, and that's what I did. I got some quarter inch ABS and I spent all day. It took me all day to get everything laid out on the amp rack and get everything perfect. And then it wasn't perfect because I had wires already in the vehicle that I was connecting to and I had to make sure I had slack and stuff. Wow. And so it didn't come out anything like their work did, but it was an order of magnitude better than just the, oh, let's zip tie this stuff. And why is it going everywhere? Um, that I originally did. And now when I, when I install this stuff, it's zip ties and you zip tie the things inside the vehicle. And that was one of my favorite projects. Yeah. I can understand why it sounds like you learned a lot as well. Oh yeah. And it was, Oh man, take, taking that, um, that stupid flexible tubing, uh, that tech flex stuff and sliding it on power wire. Uh, mm, one thing that yeah. I learned was that the size I was using would fit on zero gauge power wire but it was too much work to bother with. And you want to go a, a size up and I forget what size it was. I think I was using half inch and it would expand of course to three to around zero gauge wire. But if you spend a little more than three quarter inch, you're not spending hours sliding tech flex down a, down a cable. And I'm going to give people, uh, so, uh, I guess a word of knowledge, you know, something to think about if you want to do this. Cause I get this question a lot is what size tech flex do I need for size X speaker wire? We can't answer that question for you. We can't because honestly, people's thickness of their cable, like even even the jacket itself, can be can differ quite a bit. So the best thing to do is get some self some digital calipers and just put them on there and see what it reads, and then get you know around that size. That's the best thing to do. If you want it real tight, you get it a little bit smaller. If you want it, you know, loose on there, you know, get it either at that size or a little bigger. And I'm going to try to find my uh, my build pictures on that and see if I can pull a few images up. Well, while you do that, so, Jose Fernandez had a question. All right, far away, Jose Fernandez. He said, hey, what do you think about using eight units of dual 10-inch subs, 133 dB SPL each? So it's a lot in that question. I don't even quite understand it exactly. Is he saying eight units of dual 10-inch? So is he saying 16 total woofers, or is he saying eight? 
I think so, what he's saying is eight 10 inch subwoofers that are dual, uh, probably the brand dual voice coils each. Dual voice, okay. So, probably dual voice. That's what I'm guessing. Uh, Jose, feel free to tell us, um, how, how far off I am with that. Um, 133 <laughs> dB SPL each. Um, that's interesting because I don't think what do you mean by 133 decibels of SPL on each one of them? Yeah, see, that's that's where I was confused too because that doesn't doesn't quite add up um with what what we're thinking we don't we don't know what you're we don't get the question jose you're gonna have to clarify some things but in general using eight unit eight subwoofers or 16 or whatever sounds good to me <laughs> why not you know i mean there's so much variety what 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 subwoofers are they right um how much power can they handle what is their sensitivity um, eight Bose F1 subwoofer professional audio application. Oh, okay. That's, that's a different question than what I was thinking. Are you eight familiar Bose with the Bose F F1? No, I don't. I am not, to be honest with you. I'll, I'll look it up though. Yeah. Look it up. Is this, is this going, hopefully it's going in like an actual theater. Oh, this, or is this for PA? This looks like PA yeah, style. PA kind of sub, yeah, yeah. It looks like a PA. So you gotta be careful too, when they say, uh, so 133 decibels makes a lot more sense now that we're talking PA. So, cause that's talking about outdoor use. And when they, when they put that on there, that number 133, it typically is max SPL. So be careful with that too. That's like the maximum you'll ever hit out of it. Yeah. And there, it does say that maximum SPL at one meter. So three feet away is 130 decibel peak, uh, six DB CF. So, you know, that's, you know, 133 is going to be pretty much the max that you'll hit from that from three feet away. But if you're in a big, you know, if you're doing like a big audience or something, you're, you're going to need that. Hey, Thomas Marshall, thank you so much for the super chat. Yeah, best to protect your neck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, best thank protect you so you. much. We appreciate that. You know, as far as Bose goes, I mean, Bose is not a bad brand, but a lot of, you know, snobby audiophile types like to crap all over Bose. But the, the problem with Bose is for what you get, you can get something else that's going to outperform it and you'll probably spend less money. And so I, I just wouldn't get Bose for that reason. There's, some, there's something else out there that's as good or better for the same money or even you know better for less money. Yeah. I, well, he might already have them. I, we're not really sure what the case is. I, I mean, I think you'd be fine running them, though, if you if you want to run them. I don't think there'd be any issue with it. You know, make sure that you don't run actually 130 decibels at people three feet away because you'll blow out their eardrums. But other than that, you know, you'd be pretty pretty well set. Um, El fuego has got a, got a question about the DIY audio cat. Uh, <laughs> I see the DIY audio. The DIY audio cat had an appearance in the video. She mostly oh, yeah. hangs out in the garage. Um, and so when I'm in there filming like at night with the garage door closed, she sometimes will jump up on the workbench and get in the way. And sometimes I can't get any work done because she wants some attention. She's worse than a small child. Um, and, and so um, I don't know what's up with her, but I've noticed that she's getting less and less likely to run away when I make loud noises, throwing the table saw, something like that. And I, and she, she's been to the vet lately and I think she's got some kind of uh ear problem developing. I think she may be going deaf. I'm sorry. I must have deafened my cat with the loud noises. Um, yeah. you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I don't abuse my pets. Now, as far as advice for pets that are not in the audio sounds from tools or speakers, my advice is to get a different pet. Uh, you want to take that one back to the shelter and go get a, a dog or a cat that it will cooperate with your hobby. Um, my dog does not like the loud noises. Um, doesn't like any at all like that. And so, it's actually my wife's dog, so I can't do a damn thing about it, but I would, I would choose to trade it in for a dog that actually is into audio. So Josh Evans, I don't, I don't have pets. So my pets are the deer in the front yard. And when it comes hunting season, we don't have pets anymore. So, um, that's just how that works. But Josh Evans says, Hey, pro audio guy here, Bose PA is known as buy other sound equipment. And then later he went on to say that, uh, Yamaha has other options that are similarly priced. There it is. That will be better. So, uh, we'll, we'll stick with Josh on that. And if you wanted to DIY it, there's a ton of great woofers, especially by like eminence, um, Celestion. They have a lot of great subwoofers out there that you could use that you could build for significantly cheaper. And I think what Justin was saying is don't get caught up in that max wattage and max SPL because those max wattage and max SPL are very misleading. Okay. I had a guy talk to me the other day about 
some speakers he wanted to build. And he's like, well, the max wattage of these can take 15,000 watts or something ridiculous. And I'm like, okay, can yours take that? And I'm like, no. And I would never do that to him anyway, because that would just, you'd blow your eardrums out and the speakers themselves wouldn't, wouldn't work properly. So I don't know. All right, here's another good question. Best way to put unused subs in storage without them sagging in long run? This is a very easy question, 24. Don't. Why? Sell them or play use them. That's it, man. That's either sell them or you, what do you think, Justin, about that? Like that's silly. I, I have no idea how to keep them from sagging. I mean, the thing you got to remember if they're if they're sitting in the enclosure and you're playing them, aren't they gonna sag too? I mean, I don't know how to stop a speaker from degrading and parts just break down and wear out over time things decompose um i have no idea how you would you would protect subs in storage well subs in general i mean typically the motor structure itself is gonna is gonna handle most of that it's really like passive radiators that you'd really be more concerned with especially if you had them passive radiators you never want them to be like either up or down firing i'm gonna make this a little wider because you don't you typically oh. want them either up or down firing because when you do that they they will gain sag and since they don't have that motor structure to to hold it in place it's it's going to deteriorate a lot faster and change so i'd always tell you if you're looking at passive radiators you know that's one thing to think about you typically want those forward or rear facing and then subwoofers yeah like what you said it, it's going if it's going to fail it's going to fail eventually there's not much you can do climate controlled is always better though you know, if you can do climate control, Big Mike definitely. McDonald's got a question and this is, um, I'm not sure. I know the answer to that. Doing a, doing a build in an O3 Tahoe got four Harmony 18s. That's, that's going to be loud. Four eights in the doors. That's going to be loud. Uh, dome tweeters or bullet tweeters for sound quality. <laughs> um, I have never heard in, in, you know, a, a, a bullet tweeter. And I don't think I ever want to because they just look like they're designed to pierce eardrums. Mm -hmm. um, I would think a dome tweeter would sound better. I can't imagine that the only thing that would sound, my, I would imagine the thing that could sound worse than a bullet tweeter is a piezo tweeter. Uh, and I'd love to know your take on that, Nick. And anyone in the chat who's had experience listening to these um, uh, bullet tweeters, what, what do they sound like? They look like they hurt. I don't. Uh, yeah, I, I'm not a fan of bullet tweeters. You're never going to get me listening to bullet tweeters. You're never going to get me listening to piezo tweeters. Although I do have some piezos that I bought on Parks Express because they were like a dollar each. And I was like, I wonder how bad these really are. And so I picked them up because they were buyouts. And I was like, well, we'll try them out. And they were so bad. I mean, they were terrible. I was just like, no, 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 no. Yeah, I mean, there's an advantage to that, though, because, you know, like with Piso, you should be able to just let them run, not no crossover or anything else, and and be good. I, I, I mean, obviously, there's sacrifice there, and the sacrifice there is sound quality almost always. Well, that's, and that's why you see Pizos in cheap systems of all of all types everywhere because you don't need a crossover on, on a piezo tweeter now because for, from a standpoint we're testing it so it won't blow i don't know how the math of that works out and how the crossover works i just know that you don't need a tweeter to protect or, or a crossover to protect the tweeter but you probably need a crossover to stop it from sounding like crap or maybe you need <laughs> something that's not a piezo but that's not too <laughs> that's not um, as a true voice of reason uh, comment, they're a good varmint deterrence and piezos are used in lots of different applications, uh, sensors and stuff like that. But I can't imagine why you'd want to use one for a speaker. You know what I think is funny is that here's the deal. First of all, oh, good to see a tr true voice of reason, still a staple on the uh, forum. I love, I love having him on here. So it's good to have him on here, but here's the deal. You, did you know that you're, I mean, people are proposing to you on here Look at this. What? Good advice, Justin. Oh, you want to buy my two 12-inch? Did, that, did that girl who pops up on 12-volt talk show up and start throwing us some money? I, <laughs> <laughs> not that kind of proposal. Come on, man. My wife Look at us. <laughs> she would not stand for that. Um, um, but, uh, you yeah, well, know, okay, you know, if the price is right, well, how much are your, are, are your Alpine Type R's? Um, I'm good at the moment right now. I've got enough drivers laying around that I need to do something with. Uh, so, um I don't know. Put them on Facebook Marketplace. See if someone will bite. Yeah. So here's here's another thing. Since we're talking about you know bullet tweeters and we're talking about P, we talked a lot about PA stuff. One of the other things you want to keep in mind with PA style speakers is when they talk about max wattage. Keep in mind they're talking about that if you have the correct crossover in place too. So they're not saying give it 15,000 Watts and never protect it. They're assuming that you have a PA style amplifier 
that you can put a high pass on at 40 hertz or whatever the subwoofer needs, and then you can give it X amount of power. Um, but yeah, there. Uh, someone said it early, and I can't I can't find it right now. But th- there is a truth to it that it usually is very high distortion at that point in time. Anyway, oh, there's some really great comments here. So. Um... Which uh, ones? Wago. I want to talk about Elfa Wago. Any advice for getting my wife into audio? She's off for the summer and has really good finishing skills, sanding mm. paint wraps that could help with my projects. Oh, I, I have the answer to this. I do. Th- this is easy. Are you ready, El Fuego? Don't tell her it's a speaker until the project is finished. <laughs> <laughs> uh, <laughs> yeah, just, just don't tell anyone that. Right? I mean, that's how it works. Just tell her it's going to be a nice table and then forget that it has speakers in it. All right, Justin, what, what's your, what, you, what are you going to say? I don't have any idea. I mean, the the, the trick to getting someone in, involved in something like this is to find some way to connect with them that you haven't connected with them before. Um, I mean, I think about my own experience getting my wife into audio. It's It's been little things where I say to her, hey, we just got you a car. It doesn't have a backup camera. You look, you need a backup camera. You need a good head unit in there. And so I put an Alpine head unit in there with a, with a touch screen. And now she loves it because she listened to her podcast on the way to work. And that backup camera, she's like, how did I make it my entire life without a backup camera? And I'm thinking, well, the bumper of your car <laughs> disagrees with that. Um, <laughs> um, but it's little things like that that can kind of get them into it. And after I put a home theater system in that was you know, halfway decent, uh, my wife got kind of more into it. Now when we when we go you know, stay in an Airbnb or something like that, she turns on the TV and it's just TV speakers. She says, wow, why does it suck so bad? So like, <laughs> that's how things sound when you don't have a guy like me around to try to make it better. And I don't think my stuff is that good. I'm a, I'm a horrible, I'm a rank amateur at this. Um, I'm just a guy with a camera and some power tools is what I am. But it's fun. Right. I mean, and, and my wife will get in a vehicle that I put a radio in and she'll jam out and say, Oh, I don't like all that stuff. It's like, well, you're blowing my ears out. Turn it down. So here's the other thing too. It, it you know, you got to remember that it's not about the, the end product necessarily when you're doing this with, with your wife or whoever you, you care about, it has to be more about spending the time with them. And so if it takes a little bit longer, whatever, just, you know, let it be, and let you guys each kind of go at your own pace. And I think that's the good thing to go. My wife has taken years to come back to, you know, where we are now. But, you know, luckily she is where she is now. <laughs> 20. Well, Nick, you've you've had you've managed to even get your wife to show up in your videos. Um, and I'm and I'm probably not going to get uh, get my wife to show up in the video anytime soon. I did, and she cringes every time she watches them. But it's worth every every second of it. So. So, all right. So, um, you, why don't you ask your, you had a question for me. Why don't you ask that question before I go well, to the next before one? Before I ask the question, I want to say hi to uh, the one and only Robert High Five Vega who who abandoned us. He abandoned us, but he's still here in the chat. So, <laughs> the class up's too personal. Now we know why he left. Now we know. <laughs> I feel so abandoned. <laughs> he wants this one. There's something going on with my camera today. I don't know why it's um, doing what it is. So I do have a question for you, Nick. Um, and I've been wondering this since you um, since you made that awesome box for the build off. And that is working with epoxy. Uh, is it hard to work with? What's it like to work with epoxy? I've seen you, you you did a fantastic job on your your video. Is it yesterday or the day before? The CSS uh, video. Yes. Um, you know, I don't remember what day it, it was. I think it was yesterday or the day before. It was one of those two days. So you're you're right there. <laughs> um. And so this was a box that was a you know a black finish that was it was sanded very well. Um, it was a, a kit with the two passive radiators in it, and you put that cedar chunk on top of it, and then you epoxied that. And I'm kind of curious, what did you do before you epoxied the cedar? Did you put any stain or anything on it? And how hard is the epoxy to work with? How messy is it? And how 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 much do you tear everything up that it touches? So the the biggest problem with epoxy is it's expensive. Okay, so. Uh, I would say a little goes a long way, but that's not really true. Um, I mean, it, it, a lot goes a long ways. Um, and it, it, you use more than you think. Let's put it that way. It's semi hard on wood because here's what's going to happen. The first coat that you put on wood, there's a lot of pores in the wood. And so mm-hmm. the wood will actually release that in there and you won't get a very great finish typically the first time. So you usually just skim coat it and then let it be that crappier finish. And then, you know, either sand it down if you need to, 
or then put your flood coat on and you just have a blow dryer with you or I use a heat gun. I use a paint heat gun that I picked up at Home Depot, a little Wagner and just keep getting the uh, bubbles out. But I'd say it's pretty easy. You know, you just got to make sure to pay attention to drips and also the edges, you know, so go across the edges if you have something that's going over uh, and you'll want to get that, you know, when it's like during cure time, not right away and not, you know, six hours later, but it does take almost a full day to really cure. And then I think really a week to be fully hard. Um, now, granted, you can use it within a day. When you said a heat gun, you just mean to plug in electric heat gun, nothing special to it, right? You, it's just, you don't yeah. want to use like a butane torch. I guess you can use a no, torch. Yeah. Gun. Yeah. People use butane torch. I, I don't because I got gotcha. you. I use that. There's been some good questions. So here's the deal. Uh, AJC is a, AJC is actually, uh, actually big, Big Mike McDonald and AJC had some good questions. I'll do Big Mike's first because he asked it first. Um, what about the Android rotating 13.1 head unit? Think it'd be a better buy for the options than our norms like Alpine, Kenwood, or Pioneer. Now, I have some thoughts on that, but I want your thoughts first. Oh, I, I don't know because I don't have any experience with any of those um, Android head units. Um, there's no reason why they won't... Um, why they won't work. But my guess is they're probably not going to have the audio quality and the high volt preamp outputs that we tend to look for in car audio. Uh, but they're probably going to be loaded with features. And the only feature you really need is Android auto and Apple CarPlay, because that's what you're going to do. You're going to plug your phone into it and use your phone to use it to control your phone and get hold of your apps on your phone while you're driving. Yeah. So I, I have uh, used a couple Android Auto ones, or I'm sorry, Android ones. And the Android base ones, I've never been really too pleased with. They usually are pretty clunky. The Android Auto ones are typically Linux-based, uh, where they're just Android Auto, and you're basically just using your phone. And those I love because they're really fast, intuitive, etc. But really, it's, it's really as good as whatever phone you're using because it's basically your phone. Uh, the Android head units, I haven't been as big a fan they're a little bit more clunkier and and there's any of the android ones there's things that you may not like about them for me and what i use because i don't really use the radio and the radio function is always clunky I like am fm radio I, it works great for me for the linux based android head units they're only like 200 bucks and they work fantastic i would love to maybe try a higher end pioneer and see why i would pay a little bit more but for me most of the time even having some of the safety features disabled is nice on the Android ones. Like I can watch my backup camera at all times if I want to, which is nice when I'm trailering stuff around. So, I mean, if you know what you're getting, I don't think, I don't think you'll ever get as good as an Alpine Kenwood or Pioneer, but as long as you're okay with what you're not getting, then I don't see any problem with it. All right. What are your favorite brands of router bits? Table saw dado versus router. Oh, I'm sorry. Router dado router. Man, I'm going, I'm living in the South now. What router table do you get? All right. That's a good question. Um, I have been thinking about getting a dado blade for my table saw. It's been sitting in my Amazon wish list for probably a couple of months. And I've been hesitant to pull the trigger because I'm not sure if my table saw has enough juice to actually spin it up. And that's one thing to remember about a table saw dado blade. It's, it's you're adding all this mass to the blade. And so if you've got a 10 inch blade normally in your table saw, you're going to go down to an eight inch dado stack or maybe even a six inch dado stack. And that's going to limit how big of a dado you can cut. I think that I want to go that route eventually because I, I find that I have a very difficult time cutting anything straight on a router. Even if I've got something to work against, I had to make a jig to do that, made a video of it. Um, yeah. I, not, no one seems to be using dado blades in car audio to do anything at all. Well, then there's a couple other problems with the dado with a router too. I, I, I don't mind it either way. I, I had a nice table set up where I would do dados with the router table, but here's one of the issues that most people don't think router. You can only go so high, so fast. Otherwise you really can, you know, burn up your bit in no time or your router for that matter. So, you know, depending on what router and stuff you have, I mean, it almost doesn't make sense to do that. You almost want to go data with your uh, table saw or, Get a CNC, which is what I would recommend. Just get a CNC. Um, that's my personal opinion. <laughs> I mean, they're actually getting very affordable. I think you can get a, a pretty decent CNC for about 1500 bucks now. 
as far which, as brands of bits and blades and stuff, I mean, I, oh. I have some, um, I don't know, when I first got a router, I got a, just a, a kit full of router bits but, you know you know i mean you can get them anywhere uh this were skill brand i think they were they probably came from lowe's or home depot oh, sorry i didn't mean to show that sorry oh, you're good um, I'm sure it i i've um i've bought some freud bits i've bought some white side router bits off amazon i have no idea if they're any good but I, they've been working just fine i'm a big fan of those spiral cut bits i feel like they do a lot better job cutting um Yonico bits. I've had a couple of those. We've talked about those on the show. I'm on the fence on those. They're cheap and that makes them nice, but they're also not the best, not the best bits ever. So, so Thomas Marshall hits two. He said, uh, Diablo and Freud, which believe it or not, Diablo is made by Freud. Made by Freud. Uh, yeah. so, you know, there you go. They're both very, very good. And I'll tell you, um, to start off with some of the less expensive ones, Yonica on, uh, Amazon, they're pretty decent. They're not going to be the sharpest. They're not going to last the longest. I know Justin had some issues with his. Of course, he tried to like tear through something that he probably shouldn't have. <laughs> but, probably, yes. But, but those, I, I have a, oh, oh, what are they? My chamfer bits. I've been using, I have a chamfer fit set from them I bought. Fantastic. Love, love them. So, you know, I would recommend those as well. I've uh, I've been eyeballing some uh, some bits. I think it'd be kind of cool to have. I'd like to give one of those miter lock bits a try and see if I can uh, just use cabinet grade pl cabinet grade plywood and use the miter lock bits of a nice miter corner that locks together and hide any of the of the plywood panels. I'll have to try one of those. Dude, they're um, they're harder to use than you would think. That's what you know. That's what I've been told. Uh, I, I'm, I'm told they're about impossible to set up. So, yeah, yeah, well, well some of them, some of them you can actually buy a setup little like plastic setup jig. And if you can do that, you know, that's the way I would go with them. Like I've tried them a few different times and I'm just not a, I personally am not a fan, but you know, you might be able to use them and just destroy it. But uh, I don't know. I actually, you know what, here's a good question. What, what tool do you want to get for your workshop? Oh, uh, what, what tool do I not want to get? Now, what I tool mean, do my, you my, want to get that my, you don't my have? My list of my list of tool wish list is is huge. I, you know, I'd love to have a I'd love to have a CNC machine. I'd love to have a, a laser cutter of some type. Um, I'd I'd like to upgrade to a saw stop. I'm going to have to eventually get to the point where I can build in a, a detached <laughs> garage before I can do that because I'd like to get one that's huge, take up a lot of space. Um, I've, I've ordered a router lift and I'm going to be doing a video at some point this summer on putting together a custom router table and a router lift. Robbie Hansen, a planer. Uh, I'd love to have a planer. That would be fantastic. I'd like to have a planer, a jointer. I don't have a drill press. I don't have any of those good stand mounted sanders. A spindle sander would be nice. Like I said, my wish list of tools is, is long. I'd love to have more, more tools. So the, the next tool that I've really, well, there's two tools I'd really like to get next. Uh, one would be a planer. Obviously, we just mentioned that Robbie Hansen said it too. Robbie, by the way, is coming down in July, and we're going to be building him two subwoofer boxes that we're we're designing from the ground up for some 15-inch Dayton Audio reference series drivers that he got. The HOs, I believe, the HOs, I think, is what he got. So we'll be doing some of those. So that'll be pretty cool. Anyway, um, Justin, I think we lost you, bud. The other thing that, oh, you're back. The other thing that I'd like to get is uh, at a, uh, oh, we lost Justin again. Now I can't even think. A biscuit joiner. I'd like to get a biscuit joiner. Oh, hey, I'm back. You're back. What, what happened? I don't know. Uh, we started talking tools and you left. I'd like to get a biscuit joiner. But while we're talking tools, I want to tell you guys about this because I just got this. I, I have no affiliation with them. I don't even know if they sell them on Amazon. This is the Recon M1. Do, do any of you guys know this about this yet? The Recon M1? I know you do, Justin, because I've talked yes. to you about it. This thing is really cool, man. Although the case, I think, is so cheap. I mean, I, I'm i not even going to talk about that, but I don't like this case. But anyway, the Recon M1 used to be in here. It's not in here anymore. But basically what it does is it attaches to your like chop saw fence, and it's got a little wheel on there. And you zero it out on your table saw fence, and then you roll it out, and it'll tell you exactly how far you're cutting. And then you just cut it, and it cuts it perfect every time. So that's a new tool I just got that I'm really excited about, if it works properly. I haven't really got a chance to really test it yet. 
So Sound Dr. Ali had a question earlier up in the chat. What uh, brand of head unit do we like in car audio? So do you have a head unit brand you like in car audio? Yeah, kind of. Um, I, I have a Craig Joiner, by the way, Deviant for Life. I which is fine for some things, but I'd rather I'd rather have a biscuit joiner for for like tabletops and things of that nature. But um what head unit brands do I prefer for car audio? I like Pioneer only because I'm partial because I, I used to always have Pioneers and I love them and always have, and they were usually pretty good for sound quality. Um, and Alpine would be the other one that I always really liked, but those would be two, not because I know really what's good now, but because of really, you know, my past experiences with them. Yeah. So I'm, I'm always been a fan of Alpine and most of that just, just simply a case of arrested development when I was young and Alpine was the, was the top stuff out there. And I couldn't afford any of this gear when I was a kid. Uh, I long for the day that I could afford to buy a nice Alpine head unit. And now that I can afford head units, I'd prefer to buy an Alpine and they're not that much more expensive than the rest of the competition. Apparently I like Kenwood's I've run Kenwood's before a long time ago. I've run Sony's. Uh, they all seem to do about the same thing. One thing I like about the modern Alpine head units, virtually all of them from the single den on up to their high end halo units, all of them basically run the same software. And these things have nine band fully parametric equalizers. Mm, so that wow. allows you to select, you know, these nine bands anywhere in the frequency range you want them at. So it's not a fixed point. And you can even control the cue. It's fully parametric. So you can control the width of the space that you're boosting. And that is something that I don't think any other head unit manufacturer does. And I don't hear people talk about that when they talk about what these head units can do. And so if you've got an Alpine head unit with a nine band parametric equalizer and time alignment, um, you can probably build out a nice sound quality system with just that, just put, you know, the front speakers on your tweeters and the, and the, and the rears on your mid ranges in your door and off you go. Yes. And I will tell you this too. Here's the other thing. Um, we were talking about Android head units and some people say, Hey, you know, if you care about sound quality, not the way to go. And they're, they're right about that. Unless you're using, of course, uh, external amplifiers. And then even then, you know, it may not be providing the right amperage that you want if you're going for really high sound quality. And that's, that's a true point. Uh, they're never going to sound typically as good. They're usually much cheaper in that regard. But in the same instance, most, in my opinion, most decks in general just don't really have great sound quality unless you're using external amplifiers and, you know, better speakers and things of that nature anyway. I, I've always felt like the car industry to a certain degree has lacked in sound quality. All, overall. Yeah. Overall. Y yeah. No. Yeah. Um, it, it can be, I think a lot of times in car audio that um, we think – we don't focus enough on sound quality and we focus too much on can it play clean and loud and clean and loud is not the same thing as sound quality loud and not distorted just means having lots of power so you can crank it up loud. So I know, which is why I'm excited because uh, well, first of all, let's say hi, David Koslick. Thank you so much, man, for the $10 super chat. What is up to you, David, man? Super excited to have you on here and guys. Don't forget, if you do a super chat, whatever question you ask will have to be answered. So you can ask Justin whatever question you want, and he'll have to answer it. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, you didn't I, like I want to answer a comment from earlier. Someone had commented that since I've got plenty of drivers laying around, I need to put them all in a base van. Uh, yeah, I mentioned I this that. last week, um, and... Uh, you know, my last video that I dropped yesterday, I had a mention of the base fan in there. The vehicle that that was identified as my potential base fan has been sold. It's been turned into cold, hard cash uh, that I'm going to be putting towards probably car repairs and maintenance on the other fleet of cars I've seen to have. I do not have a vehicle for a base fan. I'm not going to make a base fan. I'd love to make a base fan one day, but I'm not to the point where I've got the tools or the time to build that uh, think about how long sound man has been taking to work on his base van he's got so, a dedicated shop it's his full-time job so quick question when is your base van going to be finished i don't know probably before <laughs> sound man <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> oh man, that was a that was a burn and a half. Right hey, there. did y'all catch the sound man uh, interview on Twelve Volt Talk? Man, that was fantastic. He had he had some great stories to tell about his early days and how he got started with those iPad head units. Um, I love to do the iPad Dash thing. I honestly, I look at these high end head units and what they cost, and I think to myself, I think I could order a sound man kit and I could order a. Uh, um, order an iPad. And I think I could probably do something that's better than some of the stuff that's out there. So here's the deal. And this is what I'm trying to get at is I, I want to see, and, and we're hoping to maybe be able to get Justin some PA style speakers, because I'd like to see what PA speak speakers, good PA speakers when properly integrated can do for sound quality in a car, because overall you should think that they should do pretty well with high efficiency. They shouldn't need much power. A lot less power should mean less distortion on the speaker end and a lot less distortion on the amplifier end. Mm -hmm. So overall, they should theoretically do well. I don't know. Should. I mean, will they? I don't. I, I mean, I don't know, but I'd like to see. Scott from Powerhog Audio. Thanks, Scott, man. What is up, man? It's good to have you on uh, again. I heard that he, last I checked, they had sold out of all their amplifiers. Scott, are you guys back? Do you guys have any more amplifiers or anything in stock? What do you have in stock now? Let us know so everyone can know. By the well, way, while yeah. he's answering that in the chat, I'll, I'll comment on the the, the Pro Audio out. PA speakers oh, in, yeah. in a car. That's something you see a lot in SPL builds, but I've never seen anyone do it in, a, in an attempt to be sound quality. And I'm what I'm curious about is I'm curious about how low you can cross those things over. Well, that's what it's going to be because a lot of – Right. You know, how high is the Q? Can you do it like infinite baffled? Are you going to need to build a box? Typically, though, the boxes and ports on a PA speaker are really small, but mm -hmm. the problem mm -hmm. is they don't always go down that low. So the question would be, you know, do you need like a mid base unit in there with it? Right. Right. Would you need another driver to fill in the hole that's going to be there because they don't play low? Yeah, and Scott said, hey, PA speakers sound great in car audio when used correctly, if played in the right frequency range. I think there's going to be some truth. I mean, well, I think I mean, obviously Scott knows, but I think that's that's probably the truth to it right there is, you know, do it. And Thomas Marshall said, man, we didn't know how to respond to their chat. And he's right. We didn't, man. We didn't. <laughs> I, I, I must have missed what he said. So no, I, when I, he gave I, us I the super chat, man, when. Yeah, we 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 put it on the screen. We thank you so much, Thomas Marshall. We appreciate you jumping in here and uh, and, and supporting <laughs> us like this. Um, it's it's awesome to have all of you in here supporting us. We really appreciate it. Yeah, it would be inter it would be interesting. I, well, I'm interested to see uh, what you can do because I've tested a lot of PA speakers close, and they do very well in low as far as like low power requirements, you know, they do very well. Now, the one thing that PA speakers can have issues with a lot of times is non-linearities as far as, you know, when you push them louder. So that would be interesting, you know, because you're not going to need to push it louder, which is why I think it would be good. Thomas absolutely. Marshall said, absolutely. My pleasure. Bro Tatos. Bro Tatos. Bro Tatos? No, Bro Tatos, man. Come bro -tatos? on. Bro Tatos? Bro okay. Tatos. Yeah. What? Where I'm, not, I'm not up with the slaying of the youth. You got to remember, he's from Tennessee, so you know. Actually, is that where is that where you grew up in Tennessee? Yes, yes. Born and raised in Tennessee. Born and raised in Tennessee. Ah. Yep, yep. Okay, well, I didn't know that. Spent, so you spent a few years in school in Illinois, but other than that, my entire life has wait, been in Tennessee. Which where, is the, where in place. Illinois? Whereabouts? Ah, uh, Champaign. Oh, Champaign Urbana up there, huh? Yep. Yep. Oh. Yep. Did did my did my time there at the U of I. So yes, yeah. Oh, yes, the University of Illinois. I was thinking, like, what school is that? Because I'm from Illinois originally. That's where I ah, grew yes. up. So, but not not Champagne, not Champagne. No, <laughs> no, wait, not D there. Says I was right. That's bro tatoes. No, he's wrong. Oh, okay. <laughs> Just like that. D wrong. <laughs> I don't know about that. D I think Deviant for Life is up on the slang of the youth these days. I don't even see where he said you're right, but whatever. I'm not, I'm not going to, he's wrong. Um, <laughs> all right. So <laughs> TV for life. LMAO. <laughs> I say it like Justin said it. Well, I'm sorry for all of you guys. So city, city. G we, well, all right. Well, now we, we got to ask here. Thomas, Thomas, which one is it? Is it the way I said, 
or the way Justin said. Justin, say yours again. I can't even say yours. Bro tato. And I say bro tato. Wait, See, I thought it was bro, like a potato, bro-tato. but a bro potato. Bro tato. What did I say, bro tato? I, I said it cooler. The first listening time. in on the on the broadcast on the um, on the podcast is it's like just I don't know. audio of this and has no idea what the hell's going on. They're going to tune right. No, out. They're, they're yelling at they're yelling right now at, at us saying, "I say it like Justin says it." So okay, well, I'll 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 give you the win on this one then. <laughs> Can you highlight a comment? City Jenkins just listed uh, all of his gear. Um, ILX two fifty nine, uh, Chicago. Okay, there we go. Chicago. ILX 259, yeah. uh, an Alpine DSP, some PDR amplifiers, uh, got some uh, uh, all Alpine Type R, but some JL 12W6 in mixed with all the Alpine. a sponsor. So, you do need a sponsor, yeah, I, but it's if, probably if not going to come from Alpine. Was, <laughs> if Alpine would sponsor my channel, I'd run all Alpine all the time. Uh, <laughs> from front to back, everything would be Alpine. <laughs> True Voice of Reason says it the right way. Bro spuds. <laughs> <laughs> i thought that was bro spoods <laughs> yes i i'm actually i just want you guys to know that i'm very proper when i drink which is why i always stick my pinky out like this which way is the camera this way right so mm -hmm. yep that's oh unproper unproper justin so all right so here's the deal if Justin and I, we, I want to ask you guys a question. If Justin and I ever did another build off, what would you guys like to see us build? I'm not saying we're going to do a build off. I'm just curious. If we did a build off, what is it that you guys want to see us build? You know, I, I have an idea of what I would want us to see. I want to see us build something that you've never done before that you can't possibly succeed at <laughs> because a you car? are me. <laughs> Just watch what we do. You're, 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 I'm at a disadvantage here. You've got far more skills yeah. than I do. <laughs> Contest, and I'm okay with that. I thought your executive, which is right behind you, looks fantastic. I really like that build. To be honest with you. I, oh yeah, I was I was very pleased with the result. I thought I, to be honest with you, I thought they were all good. Yes, Deviant, you can submit a boom box. I don't know how, but you can. Why don't you just send us a, a picture somewhere? You can send one on my my website and. We'll we'll show it next next episode if we get a chance. You know what you can do if you if you buy something from Parts Express and you build something with their stuff and you submit to their <laughs> customer project gallery, they'll give you like a twenty five. Is it twenty five or fifty, Nick? Uh, they'll give you. Like I think it's twenty five. Yeah, they'll give you a discount code for your next order. And so, like, if you if you're making stuff and you want to get a little bit of just cash so you can go buy things from parts express i mean hey 25 bucks it's 25 bucks all it takes is a few pictures all right so here's what joaquin juarez says hola you're gonna have to say it because i'm gonna say it wrong potato chips <laughs> color, color blindness in the house man thank you joaquin juarez and uh what man, everyone everyone's gonna make me say all all the bad all the wrong words i'm gonna say it all wrong and everyone's gonna make fun of me forever which is true i get made fun of all the time in my videos for saying something incorrectly so makes sense now oh man scott said he's gonna start making some home cabinets now with all his date and stuff which i'm glad to hear we need more people building home stuff oh yeah deviant for life i should post mine on my youtube channel i think that's a great idea you know, as far as home speakers go, you know, one thing that I find interesting is most people don't build home speakers. They just go you know, buy some speakers, order some off Amazon. <laughs> uh, if But if you have enough skills to build a subwoofer box and it doesn't look completely terrible, you can build home speakers. We know who uh, got it now. El Fuego got the blast. Button. Everyone asked who got it and he, he wouldn't answer it. El Fuego got it. Ah, excellent. El Fuego got it. That's great. If go, I'm glad that you got that. Do, do you, and what it, it looks even better. It sounds awesome and looks even better. That was a cool build. I really liked his build. You know, it's the Boston hat, bro. <laughs> That's it. But I didn't go park the car. <laughs> I have friends in, in mass. I have family in Massachusetts. So Scott said, Oh, sorry. Yeah, his old 90s Serwin Vega cabinets just don't do it for me anymore. I'll tell you what, man. If you ever get a chance, if you really want to build something, Scott, you should build the Soundstage 15. They, they're they amazing. They really are really great, I, I think. 
I mean, I might be partial to him, but you know, that's what it is. Here's the deal. I, I told you guys about this last week. It last it was it last week or the week before. I really do believe that if anyone wants to get a tool, they should get like a mi- even a mini CNC off Amazon for a couple hundred bucks, a nice one with like screw drive, you know. And I think you guys would be amazed at the things that you can do, just even engraving your speakers or doing a little design on it. I think you'd be really, really impressed. Uh, like I said, one of one of my friends, uh, Jeff, is doing that, doing a great job on it. It looks fantastic what he's been doing. And uh, he actually has already made enough projects to pay off his CNC, which was only like $100, but still, <laughs> you know, 100 200 bucks. And now he's working, saving the money up for his next CNC. So I do think more and more people would should get. So in. what size does he have for that hundred two hundred dollar CNC? How I mean, something like that might be great for like cutting out the um, the cuts on a speaker baffle, right? I mean, because a, a router and a, and a circle jig, you yeah. know, that can that can run you over a hundred bucks. But if you can get a CNC, I mean, I mean, what 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 is all in a two hundred dollar CNC machine? Yeah, I'd have to look, but I think it's only like a twelve inch cutting area, something like that. Okay, so but if you were making bookshelf speakers, you cut out speaker baffles and speaker cutouts all day long with that. Oh yeah. Now the only thing is with something like that though, it's very slow, very slow. So I don't I know that you. I don't know that you'd want to unless <laughs> it would take all day want, long. <laughs> yeah, unless you just want to leave it like while you're at work and then come back and be finished. You know, then something like that would be good. But uh, what do you say? Yeah, I've watched a lot of both your videos and other designs. I just got an X carve, so it can make something nice. There we go, Scott. I just actually upgraded mine. I'll pull up mine here in a second. Did I show? I haven't showed it on here yet, have I? I don't think you have. You showed us. Uh, we, we we chat afterwards you sometimes, it. and so I know I've seen it. Well, you get talking. I'm gonna I'm gonna pull up the one that I just bought. Now, it's not here yet. It it takes about I don't know ten weeks for them to get here. I'm I'm still in the process of building the table for it. So. While you're pulling that up, I got a question for Scott down at Power Hog. I, I know y'all are planning a big event. Is that right, Scott? You're planning a big event at the end of the month? Oh, that's right. Yeah. I, I actually want to go to that. I wonder if that, I that might be fun, yeah. Yeah, I might I wonder if I could get some time to do that. Deviant for life says he's very surgical with his router and does not need a CNC. So I'm impressed if you are, because uh, <laughs> unless I've got some kind of guide or something, everything I make with the router looks like crap. I need some way to stabilize it. I never could draw straight lines. Uh, I always colored outside the lines in school. I'm very surgical with my router as well. It just happens to be on a CNC. <laughs> uh, I'm sorry. That is just, all right, let me just, uh, save a couple more images and we are all good. So, all right. So here's the 9988 ask high end table saw or CNC. Um, I, that's a tough call. I I think that where I am with the table saw is I want to upgrade to a saw stop. I mentioned that earlier. Uh, I I would rather have that first than a CNC uh, just for safety reasons, but it's a tough call. Do you spend two grand on a table saw or two grand on a CNC? Yeah, I, I would get the table saw, but here's what I would do, which I, I mentioned this a lot, is I would go to an auction or look on Facebook Marketplace and find a used one. Because if you find a used one, you'll actually be able to get a good deal on mine. Like I got a used Powermatic 66, uh, which is a fantastic saw, and mine run me, ran me 200 bucks. Uh, it's a fantastic saw. I'll never need a new one. Uh, unless I just want to, it's got a three horsepower motor on it. It's just a really, really good thing. So let's go. All right, here we go. So here's the one I just upgraded to. This is called the CNC for newbie pro. I think four, it's a four foot by four foot one. And I, that's it. I, I have more pictures, but it's not letting me cycle through them. So, okay. But that's that's the basically it. But that's gonna be hopefully a, a really good machine when I get it. And let's hope so. Yeah, so I'm gonna try to do that first to last. As parts express or someone should offer custom CNC cabinets. Uh, that's something I do plan to offer when I get the new CNC in. So if you guys want that, just keep an eye on that. And I'll I'll offer that. I'll of course give some you know, discounts probably to my um, 
to my patrons. But yeah, there there is you know there's a lot into designing see even CNC designing a cabinet because you still have to do all of the computer leg work and stuff. And some people have said you know it doesn't really make a lot of sense for one-offs, and they might be correct uh, because you know depending on how long it takes you to design it. Yeah, it may, they might be somewhat correct. The, the only other thing, too, that you got to remember about is that CNCs have tolerances, and so do speaker manufacturers, driver manufacturers. And mm -hmm. you may not know what the manufacturer's tolerances are. So what I'm getting at is it's possible that you order a custom cabinet and the cabinet ends up not, or the speaker cutout or whatever ends up not, quite fitting it the way you wanted to because the tolerances of one or the other was off a little. And that's, that's a big deal. Every time I make a speaker cut out for an enclosure of any type, um, I always make a test cut on a piece of scrap to see if the speaker is going to fit. And it sometimes doesn't, you know, pull up the specs. Here's how big it says it is. Make the cut out. Nope, not going to fit or you know, too big, too small, whatever the case may be. So I'm, I'm, you know, I'm a big fan of having the speaker there physically when I make the cut so I can verify things will work. Yeah. Thomas Marshall, I, uh, as a CNC routing, if, oh wait, no, no, sorry. Wrong thing. Uh, someone said that they bought their CNC. Oh, here it is. Deviant for life. Oh, from wish. Yeah. From wish six months ago and it's still not here. And I believe that. Uh, unfortunately wishing you, you wish it'll show up one day to show up, but that's the problem right now with, especially with COVID man, that things are staying in customs. Things aren't getting delivered. And then there were those wrecks and well, not be on the bottom of the ocean. I I've actually tried not to get anything from China right now because of that. Oh, also I showed you guys last week, the, uh, punk kill day driver, 15 inch driver. They actually got back to me and said that they can't send it because of something that's going on right now with, something over there again. So won't be showing that off, but it does look like a really cool subwoofer still. <laughs> All right. I got a, I got a question for you, Nick and anybody in the chat. I mean, I, we were supposed to answer questions, but I'm going to ask questions because it's our show. We can do what we want. Um, <laughs> what's going on in your local areas with uh, plywood MDF and uh, two by four pricing a home Depot in my town, a two by four is just a hair under eight bucks and sheets of plywood are going for 75. So, First, I'm going to answer the table saw or CNC. I think I'd really rather have a table saw either way first because I think you can do much more, and you're going to have to break it down unless you have a good setup with a circular saw that you can do. You know, your CNC can do everything if you want it to, but it's going to take longer to do. Um, I, w I think I'd still rather have the table saw first than maybe a CNC. All right, back to what I was talking about. Uh, it's expensive. I mean, I think even cheaper birch ply is about 60 or 70 bucks for a four foot by eight foot. Now mm -hmm. I think it's 70 for three quarter and 60 for half inch. It's, you know, it's gone up a lot. It's yeah, gone. I paid, up. I paid 50 bucks for some half inch plywood to make some shelves out of. Yeah. And expensive I, shelves. And I think you're you're right on with the two by fours. I think they're like close to ten or twelve bucks here, and they were, I don't know, nine. Oh, they were like three bucks, three to four bucks a piece. So, you know, they've wow. jumped up. Now, the other thing that's crazy too is last year I built a huge. I, I we did some major renovation in our house anyway. And to make a long story short, we got a bunch of two by fours. I still have them. I'm selling them on eBay for twenty bucks a piece. It's awesome. <laughs> I'm not really. But I would say this right now, the, the, the truth of the matter is I got a call back from 84 Lumber, which is where I bought all my stuff, and they said that they owed me a deposit back. So they actually are paying me money back on the lumber that I bought last year at a discounted price from this year. I'm like, this is fantastic. <laughs> I felt like I won the lottery. El Fuego had a really good question. Uh, advice for organizing a shop when you've got limited space, half of a two-car garage. My goal is to get everything in my shop on wheels because the problem I have is that my wife wants to park in the garage about once or twice a week, especially over the winter time when she has to get up in the morning and, and, and commute. Um, she has to commute. I don't have to. So you know, I, I don't want her wasting time scraping her windshield. And so I want her to be able to hit the road and go in the mornings and have a car that's warm and toasty and ready. Uh, and so 
virtually everything in my shop is on wheels. Everything that's not needs to be on wheels eventually. Cause I, 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 I move things where I can get good camera shots. And so I'm thinking wheels is nice. Um, I've started putting French cleats on the wall, just using scrap wood, which is an expensive thing to do right now. And that's turned out to be real nice, be able to get things that were just laying around up, hanging on a wall. I like that. Yeah. And what, what, one of the things that I would recommend is building your own router table on wheels with storage. Okay. So mm -hmm, mm -hmm. wheels storage underneath. And then what you can do is you can drop your router down. So then that can also be your work workspace table. And I did that for many years in a little shed that I had. So I had a nice little router table. In fact, one of the things I did is I ended up building a, a huge four foot by eight foot table and put my router in there so I could use that as a router table, but then also use it for glue up and everything else. But also all the storage was underneath where I would could be able to put all my other tools and things of that nature. And I think, I think that's the things that you need to worry about is doing multi-purpose workstations. You know, the workstation can't be one use only. So, so my outfeed table for my table saw is on wheels. It's uh, three foot by four foot. Well, that and was that. Go ahead. The area underneath it is where the shop vac and the uh, dust collector goes. That's a good idea. So I was I, gonna say, I, yeah, I did have the dust collector on a cart. And so I had this tall cart I had to roll around and it was unstable and trying to fall over on me and stuff. And now I've got an outfeed table. That's also my dust collector. And that's really nice when I'm, when I'm on the table saw because this, the collector is right there to plug right into the saw. And when I built mine, what mine did is it became the outfeed table for the table saw, the, the same table I'm talking about, right? Mm -hmm. So it, it was a router table, it was storage, it was an outfeed table for the table saw, and then I slid it back over next to the chop saw, and it became an outfeed table for the for the chop saw. So everything was same level. And I think that's another thing that can really help is getting everything at the same level, because then you can use that table for multiple things. So let me show you this when we're talking about that. Uh, see if I can get the um, share screen. Here I've got yeah, video. and that's another okay. option. Building it the router table to hang on to the either one side of your table saw because then it can also become stabilization for larger material as well. I was gonna do a screen share and show you what I'm working on in SketchUp right now, but for some reason it's not picking up. Let me see if I can do an entire screen here. This will be I think you have to you have to take a picture of it, I think, or maybe show it as a video. Uh okay. I'm just gonna do share the entire screen. If you want to go ahead and pull it up on the stream here, let me know when it's up because I don't have the. It's up, man. The All right, You're so there. this is what I'm working on right now in SketchUp. It's a uh, going to be a router table. You can see the cutout for the router lift. Uh, my plan for this is to make this taller than my outfeed table because I'm a tall guy and I need tables that are taller so I'm not hunched over. So that's what I'm working on right there. And the idea is that I'm going to build router storage under here. I'm going to have a catch box for the dust underneath it. And, uh, and be able to hook up to the dust collector. Yeah, that's so that's what I'm working on for the router. So there'll be a box under there that the dust will fall into, um, have a dust port on it, and then build shelvings in there for all of my router bits and everything and have a nice storage and dust collection. And I might buy another shop back just to mount on this permanently. So quick question, does your router have handles on it? Um, the, uh, yes, but I'll take those off when I put it in the router lift. Yeah, I was going to say, you're going to have to take, the, oh, yeah, because you got the gesom lift, didn't you? Yes. Yeah, because that one, you just put the, the cylinder only. in. Yeah. yeah okay. I, I just saw where your spacing was with the wood, so I wanted to make sure. Um, Colby says, hey, when when are you going to do a build with the Punk Kill Day drivers, Nick? I already did a build with the Punk Kill Day drivers. If you're talking about the Cartesian drivers... Uh, and the Punk Kill Day drivers are all done. But if you're talking about the Cartesian ones, which might be what you're talking about, that's coming out um, tomorrow sometime. So it'll be out tomorrow. Well, Scott's got a good question. Uh, how do I like my sit stand desk? Yeah, I've got a, I've got a, I think he saw this. So I'm, I'm disappearing here. But I bought this uh, standing desk and I can just hit a button and bring it up to height. And I absolutely love it uh, because I've got some sciatica problems and I can, sit for a while and it starts to hurt and then I can stand until it starts to hurt and to go back and forth and I can actually get more productive because I'm not constantly having to take breaks because of pain. Um, but uh, I, I absolutely love it. I forget which model it is. I might make a, I might make a video of it sometimes so I can share some affiliate links. That's got off Amazon and it wasn't that bad expensive. And so it's, it's, it's been a good investment for me. No, I think it's a good idea. I mean, I use this office for example, as, you know, also where I do solder work, I also do my 3D printing in here. I do shooting video in here and it's 
a small room. It's 12 by, I don't know, 10, maybe 12 by 10, something like that, 12 by 12, something small. But I think the biggest thing whenever you're looking at those smaller things is is setting it up correctly, you know, where it works. You know, you have you have locations for that type of stuff. My biggest thing with a smaller shop or or things like that is dust collection. I think dust collection is the hardest part of all that. And dust gets everywhere. It does. It does. I like your desk too, but uh, I I couldn't do I couldn't use one in this office because I use it for so many other things. All right, guys, we are at the hour mark. Is there any other questions before we get going? No, Thoughts I guess on not. Box America floor speakers and so I've never heard of them. Not familiar with Box America, no. Is this a real one or did you make this up? <laughs> you never can't tell with 25 first fly. No, I really, I really can't tell. That's why I'm like, did he did he make this up? I don't know. <laughs> You just never can tell. Is he messing with us or is he being serious? <laughs> never can tell. <laughs> That's we, all good. Oh, Bic America. That makes a lot more sense. Oh, okay. I think I've heard of them. I don't yes, know anything about them, though. Supposedly, Bic's little, you know, I, I've never really listened to Bic in, in, in person. But supposedly, you know, Bic for the price is not that bad, especially their, their subwoofers. But... I don't know. I've never used them. I mean, most commercial subwoofers like that, you know, if you're ported, they're tuned to like 35 hertz or something. So if you're looking for like sub low bass, like 20 hertz or whatever, just forget about it. I mean, you're just not going to get it. I just built the CSS uh, SDX 12. It's an it's an expensive sub when we're when we're comparing it to Big America for sure. But that thing, I mean, it's it is definitely the best sounding subwoofer. 12 inch subwoofer that I can remember working with. And I would tell, I would love to see someone build that in a car and see what it does. Cause this thing is 18 and a half inch cubic, a cube with two passive radiators and the subwoofer and the deadest box that I think I've ever come across. I mean, they're, everything's one inch thick. I mean, that's the box itself weighs 70 pounds. And then you add in the 50 pound subwoofer that, and then whatever the passive radiators weigh, which isn't a ton, but you add 15 washers to each one, so then it becomes a ton. Of, I don't know. White El van Fuego. home theaters for the win. That's it, man. El Fuego asked what are our goals for sound advice. He's asked that uh, more than once, and so I thought I'd, I'd mention that. Um, I don't know that we have any goals at the moment. Um, <laughs> if we do, I don't remember what they were. Uh, so we're just kind of uh, trying to have a good time with it at the moment. Yeah, we're here for you guys. We enjoy doing this. And, you know, the biggest thing is to make sure that we get good content out for you guys. So obviously if you guys have any thoughts on what you'd like to see from us, we are always willing to listen to those. Um, I know uh, both Justin and I will admit that it, you know, our patrons will be the first say with us, but then we, but we listen to everyone. We, we do. We, we want to hear what you have to say because we know that not everyone can be a patron or wants to be for that matter. El Fuego. Thank you. El Thank Fuego. You. We really appreciate that. Keep up the hard work on the Sound Advice show. So um, one thing I'd like to do is I'll like try to bring in some guests. I kind of feel like the dynamic is better with a third person sometimes. So um, we, we definitely would like to bring in some guests. And if you know of a, of a YouTuber. What are you trying or to a, say? Or a, no, I'm just saying sometimes the yeah. dynamic is better. Okay, with yeah, person. sure. Because uh, every now and sometimes then. Sometimes just not enough. It actually happens. Sometimes I don't know what to say next. Uh, <laughs> Uh, but uh, I've completely lost focus and both in what I'm doing and my, and my camera. You, you want to bring over some guests, but hopefully some that are not necessarily audio related, right? I think that'd be kind of fun. Uh, there's a lot of people out there creating on YouTube that have overlapping skills and overlapping interests to, to audio. And I think it'd be fun to bring some of those on. And, you know, if you know of any creators you'd like to have on our show, we think would be a good interview or be entertaining you know, tell them <laughs> that they need to come check us out because sometimes when you reach out to someone, they don't know who you are. Even, even if you are a 45,000 subscriber channel, like Nick is, is that what you're up to now? 45. Is that right? Uh, yeah. Somewhere around there. I don't know. You, you told me yesterday and I was, Oh, like, thank you for telling me. I didn't know, but guys, uh, we did reach out to Mark Rober. He wasn't interested. So sorry. <laughs> so, no, we, we didn't reach out to him, but <laughs> If he was interested, he could come on. But uh, absolutely, yeah. But no, I, anyone could come on, unless 
Unless I don't like them, and then they can't. <laughs> I'm just kidding. Oh, man. No. So, Justin, why don't you tell us before we, we head out what it is that – and I think that's a great idea, by the way. I, I like the idea of getting other people on, like woodworkers and other things, because those are the types of skills that we need anyway. And these are skills that we know of, but that's not necessarily our expertise. Right, right. So um, what are some things that you got coming up on your channel? Oh, or as our our former colleague, Hi5 Vega, <laughs> used to say, what is it that you would like to pimp, right? <laughs> yeah. um, so, is- so right now I've got... Um, uh, I've, I've just finished a video on a cheap subwoofer box from Amazon and it's doing very well. The audience is, is enjoying it, which is a sign that it's something I should do more of. And I've already got the MDF. I bought it a few weeks ago. So it was only $80 a sheet um, instead of the 120,000 it is right now. And I've already broken it down and I'll be assembling a box. Uh, so I'm going to be able to put side by side a cheap prefab versus my box that has the same, you know, cost of material in it. And yeah, really that's going to be interesting. Just how much better my stuff is going to sound compared to the cheap prefab. And if the cheap prefab continues to perform as well as it does, I might buy some more prefab boxes and just see how they sound. Um, I've got to get some issues done with my testing. I was going to do some uh, room equalization wizard testing on it to kind of get an idea of its frequency response. But it, it, I had some noise in the system. I don't know if it was the laptop I was using or what. So that yeah, we didn't get on that. Yeah, I didn't make it in the video. Um, oh, I'd love to have Hexabase on. He's a smart guy. Pete's a Pete's a pretty smart guy. Um, but I think I don't think he's into. He's not doing much YouTube these days. I haven't seen him post in a while. Um, so here's the deal, guys. Uh, what I got going on my show? Not too much going on. I do have the Cartesian, not Kardashian. Cartesian build coming up. <laughs> this is where all the speaker terminals were in. Uh, these are just these little cubes. They're really cool though. I, I and they're gonna be they're gonna be up tomorrow. So you'll be able to see that video. If you didn't see a CSS video, you should check that out. It was a pretty cool build, and you'd be surprised at how they do their flat packs. It's very impressive. I think they did a really great job in designing that. Like I said, the subwoofer is really great too, but you almost need a PA style amp to to push it or you know, because we were talking to Derek the other day and those high powered plate amplifiers, you know, you might as well just go to a PA amplifier. And um, I got a couple other things. I'm going to have the MX-15 on. I'm going to do an overview of that. I'm going to try to get that done this week as well. And also a, a, sub, a little subwoofer build as well. So a subwoofer build may not be this week, but we'll get all that stuff going on in the next next um, couple weeks. Uh, Kardashian sisters are better. You haven't you haven't heard Cartesian yet. And I, Cartesian has the fat bottom end too. I hear. <laughs> I don't know actually. <laughs> all right, guys, that's pretty much all we have for today. So we're out. We are out. <laughs>